All right, let's see. Who do we have next? Andrew Kraft. Do you have any advice to two ANCAPs on how to become active on a Christian, evangelic, private college campus? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, what is the best way to get from statism to anarchy? Is uh, activism among your peers a good anarchy. place to start? Andrew. You hear us? You hear us? Yes. <laughs> Looking and sounding good. Who am I talking to today? I'm Andrew, and this is Brennan from yesterday. Excellent, excellent. Now, where are you guys calling from? Uh, Indiana Westland. Yep. It's in Marion, Indiana. So, if how how did you end up on on this campus in the first place? How do we do what? How did you? Well, you you describe yourself as ANCAPs, and you're on a Christian evangelic private college campus. Now, certainly, uh, escaping government-run education makes sense, but why did you choose a Christian evangelic private college in the first place? Because um, we're both Christians. All right. And this is uh, important to institutional education. How? Um, I don't necessarily think that it's super important, um, other than the fact that... We don't want to be told, you know, I, I, think, I think the major thing was I wanted to go to a Christian college as well as um, not go to a state-run college. Now, that was really the big thing. And what are the challenges that you're running into as evangelical libertarians on this campus? Statism. <laughs> okay. Care to elaborate? Are there what are the unique attachments to statism there? They think there's a biblical attachment to um, having a federal government or any government, and they think that there's biblical uh, justification to government, which we research been doing research and thinking that there's not as much as people think there is. So, you, is this all go back to uh, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and render unto God what is God, or is there, are there Old Testament passages that are being uh, applied to this. Yeah, they use they like to use that one, and but which can it can be trapped. Jesus into saying that paying taxes were lawful, and even says that in the Bible. Like they were trying to trap him so that they could use that as an excuse to execute him. So he had to use certain language to avoid um, prophecy that was about him from being fulfilled sooner than it should have been. Well, may I ask you two then? Are are you Bible literalists? What do you mean by that? Do you believe that every word in the Bible is the word of God and not open to interpretation, or that it was simply something that was written down, inspired by God? It's inspired by God, but people can interpret it how they want. You and can then, interpret it how, how you want. That doesn't make anything more truth. Uh, there, I believe that there's a certain truth to it, and, it, and if you want to interpret it the wrong way, that's fine. But um, you know, going back to and looking at the original text you you do see that the the interpretations that we have now aren't necessarily true so would you say that the bible itself is something that is man made is fallible that there could possibly be actual specific errors in the bible um i would say no other than the fact like of course you have you know you have the new new uh national version and then you have the king james version and like I think it gets it can be twisted. Um, I don't think I don't I don't really know. No, okay, no, 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 hold on. That's an important distinction. So a mistranslation or be, something being lost in translation could make one version of it inaccurate. But are you of the opinion that the uh, uh, the hypothetical original version of the Bible is beyond question and is absolutely correct that there could not be any specific mistakes in it at all? Yes. <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, so in that case, which version of the Bible are you referring to? The Gospel, the Old Testament, the New Testament, that which was put together at the Council of Nicaea, or the individual text that existed before that? Well, that's, it doesn't... We're, it's, it's still there, but it was there. That's, I, don't, I don't know how to say that. Um, we're just referring to several verses that... Um, and, and even history, like, you know, you look at Jesus, and a lot of people think that Jesus is a socialist. And because, you know, he says, 
to the church in Acts um, to they all gave up you know everything they had to live together and whatever um, and it was more of like a comedy but what we're getting at is verses like uh, I don't know exactly where it's at. Well, hold on, hold but, on, hold on. I'm, I'm, I, we can come back to this, but I, I'm I'm trying to home in on something. Uh, very fundamental to what we're talking about here, and, and I hope you'll indulge me in, in, in this conversation because I do want to challenge uh, the authoritarian attitude that I understand you guys are facing because you understand that it's prevalent within the Christian community. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. Okay, so which version of the Bible do you take as the authority, and why? The Old New Testament is like the traditionally accepted canon that uh, Westlands have accepted, so that's what we go off of. So, okay, because it was put together at the Council of Nicaea by the Emperor of Rome, right? Do you guys see any problem with that? Because accepted yeah. has been those uh, those books, and that's what we've accepted. And of course, you have you know the Catholics have several um, additional books. Um, I think there's five or six. I'm not sure, though. Right. Well, that's all yeah. right. But could it could it possibly be that you guys now are engaging in the exact same fallacy that we are uh, afraid statists are engaging in by accepting tradition or arbitrary authority as infallible and questionable truth? Sure. Do you think that might explain why there's this general authoritarian streak within the Christian community as a whole? Well, I think mankind has used whatever means possible to try to um, keep control of other people. And you could blame it on the Christianity, or you could blame it on just how some men sure, are no, evil, no. and they I, I don't use any right. possible. No, that's a fair distinction. I'm not, I'm not blaming Christianity here. It's simply, one. And, and you're right to point out that what we're talking about is something much more fundamental to human nature than any one particular religion. But when you guys say, well, we take the version of the Bible, the, the New Testament, the four books of the Gospel, as unquestionable because they were written by men, inspired by God, put together by man, uh, particularly, as we know, in, in the Council of Nicaea, for political purposes, you take that truth as unquestionable, arbitrary authority, it's the exact same premise behind statism, that because someone is elected, because they are in charge, because that's the way it's always been, because of tradition, we are accepting government as an unquestionable authority. I wouldn't say that that's it. I don't I don't think you can compare the two. I don't I don't know, maybe you can. I I don't know uh, whether or not you can. Because you're compare. saying you're saying this text written by men, put together by men, possibly inspired by God, well we won't even we don't even have to debate that. But you're saying because it's been traditionally accepted, that I believe those were your words. We are we d we decide that this text is unquestionable, that it is infallible, and then when someone when when you go to someone else and you say, well, you should question government, you should question this arbitrary authority because it is the truth written down by politicians and laws in in the halls of Congress. They say that's beyond question because of that, and you say, well, this part of the Bible is beyond question because of this tradition and this historical circumstance you are falling for the exact same fundament, fundamental logical fallacy for ascribing authority. Now, it's, it's one thing, and, and, and I'll separate this, if, you're, if you think the Bible is an allegory, or if the Bible is a mythology, and it's something that serves you spiritually, and is useful in you know, making you a better person, and it serves to make you a you know, better member of society, and, and all of that, or you know, I believe in Jesus, Christ as a, as a myth mythological figure who is a, a wonderful example of a human being that we should strive to emulate. And that's one thing. And to say, hey, and the Bible is sacred and important because I get all of this from the Bible is totally different from saying, well, it must be the truth because it's always been that way, which is what your argument boils down to. All right. Our um, argue, I would say to that is like when we look at, you said accepting authority, like we can look at government and see specific examples of where there's falsehoods or where there's things that aren't quite true or that they're lying to us. But when we look at the Bible, we don't really find any of those. And if you have Wait a second. Hold on a second. Yes. 
even now maybe you might you can argue whether or not this is contradiction but there are certainly parts in the old testament that contradict the new testament and even within the four gospels there are different versions of the stories that at least clearly demonstrate these were stories as they are written you know reported by the uh you know the the um the, the, the men who wrote them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and that they were fallible in, as human beings retelling the story. And what you're saying is, by making those texts infallible, somehow we can make the arbitrary word of a human being beyond question. And really, I think, and, and now libertarianism is a very specific political doctrine. It has nothing to do with religion. It has nothing to do with matters of faith or spirituality. It is simply self-ownership, non-aggression principle, and, and freedom as defined by those fundamental moral principles. So, but there is uh, obviously certain things that take us away from that that are similar in religion and government. And what you guys have indicated here is that taking any individual man's word as unquestionable arbitrary authority in religion is the same dynamic as what we see that you guys are running into as a problem doing outreach to fellow Christians on campus. Well, we, we see it more than just the word of men. We see that it was divinely inspired by God and that he wouldn't allow any um, mis, quote, like anything that wasn't true to be into the book. So this is what we've come to accept. So it's not that we think it's man's word, it's God's word, which I'm sure you're familiar with. But um, being like Christian and, and anarchist, like we want to be able to have like coherence between these two views so we can bring more people into the movement, which is... Kind of what the goal of the movement is, is to have more people that understand the non-aggression principle. And Jesus was a perfect perfect example of the non-aggression principle. He didn't initiate violence against anyone. Absolutely and, not. And I, and I agree and, with that vision of, of, of Jesus as, as, as an incredible figure who lived a lot of those very important values and, and uh, lived an example of those and was, was great on that count. And I, I certainly appreciate the interpretation of render unto Caesar what is Caesar's unto God what is God is yeah, let the violent state be the violent state and let the work of God be the work of God as nonviolent, peaceful, and based in the love of Christ. And I, I, I appreciate that difference. But what we are doing is, as libertarians in order to achieve a free society is helping people question arbitrary authority. And I think that would be my advice to you is think about your own adherence to what is arbitrary authority or how do you separate that at least and how can you really draw a line and say, well, this thing is the word of God, but uh, you know, a, 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 a politician saying that he is being spoken to by God, like George W. Bush said God told him to invade Iraq, that that's somehow in a totally different category. Okay, so you say he's crazy. There are people who are Buddhists and Muslims all over the world and Hindus and atheists who would say that you're crazy for taking the Bible as somehow unquestionable when there are so many contradictions and inconsistencies even within the four Gospels. Uh, can you point out any of those inconsistencies, or can you think, say any offhand? Or? You know, I'm sorry, the, other, the only ones that I would really know consistently are the ones that, that are from the Old Testament to the New Testament, where it's really obvious, where, you know, and, and you can say, yes, when Christ came in and said, you know, I absolve you of your sins by dying on the cross, that the Old Testament laws and edicts and that were irrelevant, but a lot of people still use those politically in America. But even within, uh, there are specific quotes in the scripture in the New Testament where different writers of the various gospel texts simply use different words or relate stories in slightly different ways. And maybe you might say those aren't contradictions, but if this is, the, if this is truly the word of God directly, I would hope that God would be a better writer. I would not want to worship a God who you know, is not able to compose something more coherent and concise as a text than what we see not just in the Gospels, but in the rest of the New Testament. And certainly if you include the inconsistencies and contradictions of the Old Testament, then you've got a, a whole other bag of worms to look at. But I, I, we, we shouldn't really be debating this. Because I understand that more importantly, we, we, we were libertarians first in terms of how we relate to each other nonviolently. It doesn't really bother me. It doesn't pick my pocket or break my leg, as Jefferson would say, if you guys have beliefs that, that I find uh, you know, grounded in an artificial authority. But my advice to you then to address other Christians who are having trouble questioning the authority of government is question their fundamental attitude towards arbitrary authority and in order to do that, you might be helped by questioning your own. Okay, but I would make the distinction that we weren't really submitting to arbitrary authority. Like it's, it's not like it's authority because it is authority, but 
we voluntarily submit to a absolutely unlikely, right. Which it is, is right. Unvoluntary. Absolutely. Absolutely. And being Christian itself is not unlibertarian. But there, if, if you know that being said, I think you guys should take an honest look at answering the question why because what we do as libertarians is we like to ask why and when we ask of government we get really bad answers right but if you ask why why is there this distinct streak of authoritarianism in the church that is absolutely distinct and and maybe you guys will have a better answer than me maybe you'll have a more complex answer than me and something a lot more nuanced that's a lot more helpful but i think when you can answer that question you'll be a lot better off at reaching out to to fellow christians with the with the freedom message does that at least help for now yeah. All right. Well, hopefully you guys can think about that, and I hope you'll call me back, because if you can answer that question, this has nothing to do with challenging the religion, but if you guys can think, what it, why is it that there is that distinct streak of authoritarianism within American Christendom, I'd, I'd love to hear it and have you guys call back, and will you do that for me? Yes, we will. Yep. Awesome. Thank you so much for the call, gentlemen. really appreciate it. Dude, this is like, this is really creepy. You're not like doing much for your credibility, just not answering the question. I was assaulted by an undercover FBI agent and officers of the Metropolitan Police Department. And we've had a lot of police checkpoints here recently.